Should you replace the estradiol that you've lost at menopause? In today's video, I'm going to walk you through three reasons that you might seriously consider optimizing your estradiol levels after you go into menopause. In the interest of fairness, we're also going to talk about three reasons some women choose not to optimize estradiol with hormone replacement therapy. It isn't about convincing you to do something that you're not comfortable with. I want to help you make an informed, confident decision about what's best for your health. If I could help a woman in menopause understand one word, why she should optimize her estradiol, that word would be genetics. Estradiol loss is a natural process. It's genetically programmed into every woman to happen at around age 50, 51 or so. We're going to kind of set hysterectomy or surgical menopause aside for a minute. Estradiol has been a crucial hormone ever since you started having periods, maybe around age 11, 12, 13, something like that. It's helped to regulate your temperature, your moods, your muscle stores, your fat stores. Estradiol pretty much affects the reproductive, the skeletal, cardiovascular, central nervous system, metabolic system, liver systems, every system along with your skin and your hair in women of childbearing age. Estradiol plays a vital role in maintaining overall health for four plus decades of your life. It's protected your heart from clogged arteries. It's kept your bones from being hollowed out and weakened and broken down. The loss of estradiol at menopause, while it's completely natural and in some sense unavoidable, it also comes with some serious health risks that are going to affect you for the rest of your life. Unfortunately, those risks are also in some ways programmed into your DNA, your genetics. You can't really avoid them completely, but you can respond to those risks. You can prepare for them by bringing your estradiol level back to optimal to give your body a fighting chance. In considering estradiol optimization, the second word that I'd want women to understand is the word symptoms. Estradiol loss doesn't just affect your long-term health, although that is probably the biggest part of it. Estradiol loss also causes some of the most miserable, debilitating symptoms that women experience over their entire lifetimes. Hot flashes that hit as often as every 10 minutes, even in the middle of an important presentation at work or out at a nice restaurant with friends. Embarrassing doesn't even begin to describe that. Night sweats that jolt you awake at 3 a.m. You're drenched with sweat, overheated, and then suddenly shivering and freezing, and you've got to get back in bed. Vaginal dryness can lead to painful intimacy that's a major problem for both you and your husband. Mood swings and depression, those can be so intense that some women seriously consider ending their own lives. The suicide rate among women substantially increases around perimenopause and menopause for exactly that reason. Brain fog can make you wonder if you're developing early onset Alzheimer's. You can't remember where you left your keys or your car or your kids or what your kids' names are. Heart palpitations, anxiety, fatigue, dozens of other symptoms. Estradiol is often the single most effective treatment for almost all of those symptoms. Well, the third word that I would focus on for a woman considering estradiol optimization is the word root. That's because that's exactly what the loss of estradiol is. It's the root problem in menopause. You can try all kinds of things to manage your symptoms. Uh, herbal supplements, things like black cohosh or red clover, sleeping pills, antidepressants, Zoloft, Paxil, cooling pillows, yoga, eating clean, dressing in layers, turning down the thermostat. There are even prescription drugs that are supposed to help with hot flashes. But until you address the actual hormone deficiency at the core of it all, until you restore that estradiol your body used to make but no longer does, you're just patching holes. The only way to get real, lasting relief from your symptoms and reduce your long-term health risks at the same time is to address the root problem, and that is the loss of your estradiol. Now let's talk about why some women might choose not to optimize estradiol. Well, the number one reason a woman might choose not to optimize her estradiol could be summed up in one word. That's a word that I just mentioned, symptoms. Well, I talked about this word in the context of women considering optimizing their estradiol and having lots of symptoms. But here's a common situation that I hear about all the time from women. Why should I consider hormone replacement therapy, especially with estradiol, if I'm 
not having any symptoms. I'm not having hot flashes or weight gain or night sweats or irritability or mood swings. I and many of my hormone optimization colleagues all agree that women who have devastating menopause symptoms, especially things like hot flashes and night sweats, they're actually in some ways the lucky ones. Why is that? Because those symptoms tend to motivate women to take action. Life-altering hot flashes, night sweats interrupting your sleep, those things make you desperate for solutions. I see it every day. These women are looking for relief, for help now. They want to feel like themselves again. But women without symptoms, they don't get any warning signs about what's going on inside because of the loss of estradiol. They may be facing multiple, maybe call them silent threats. Osteoporosis, heart disease, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, cognitive decline in Alzheimer's. These women just haven't heard the warning signs going off because they don't have disruptive menopause symptoms. The number two reason women might choose not to optimize estradiol could be summed up in another word. That word is cancer. Well, women are often afraid that estradiol increases the risk for breast cancer especially. And that's especially true if they have a family history of breast cancer. And that's a completely valid fear. I understand it completely. It didn't come out of nowhere. In fact, that fear has been pounded into women's consciousness by the media and by their own doctors for over two decades. That fear is almost entirely rooted in something called the Women's Health Initiative. That's the study that was abruptly stopped in 2002 because of a perceived increase in the risk of breast cancer in patients taking hormones. But if you look closely at the WHI, you'll see that the absolute increase in breast cancer amounted to less than one-tenth of one percent of the patients taking hormones. And estradiol was nowhere to be found in that study. They used an older, dirtier estrogen. It was derived from horse urine. They also used a synthetic progestin called medroxyprogesterone. And that combination, it's basically been abandoned over the past 20 years. Hardly anybody ever prescribes that anymore. Now we have cleaner, safer alternatives like bioidentical estradiol with natural progesterone. The number three reason women might choose not to optimize estradiol can be summed up in the word cardiovascular. Women have learned to fear cardiovascular risks heart attacks, blood clots, and stroke. And you know what? Those also are valid concerns. But here's what the research actually shows. When estradiol is started early after menopause and given in the right way, it can actually reduce the risks of heart attacks, blood clots, and stroke. So in some sense, the very thing women are afraid of, estradiol, might be the thing that helps protect them. Estradiol is one major piece of the menopause hormone puzzle, but it's not the whole story. There is another hormone that plays a huge role in sleep, in your moods, in especially anxiety, emotional stability, and that is progesterone. My next video answers the question, why should you consider optimizing your progesterone after menopause? Click here to watch that video now.